Hello and welcome to the assembly tutorial for the R2-D2 parts. So today we're going to take all the four different parts that we made and assemble them into one R2-D2 assembly. So let's get started. I'm going to start with a new assembly. So I'm using templates, so I'm just going to switch to the advanced view and use a template. And the biggest thing about the template is the units are already set in this case. So if you start with an assembly template, it's going to immediately open into the insert components sub menu. But just as a reminder, we're in millimeters and we can go to the assembly menu, insert components and navigate to the folder where you have all your parts. The first part that I'm going to insert is going to be essentially like the cornerstone of what all the parts connect to. And the reason for this is the first part you insert, if you right click and look on it, the only option available is to float, which means this is actually fixed right now. So if I click and hold it, try to move it, it's fixed. And you want your first part to be the main part that everything connects to. So it's locked in free space and everything attaches with mates in some way. You can insert your parts one at a time, or you can go to insert components, select them all like I've done with holding down control. And every click just inserts my part into free space. And I'm just going to arrange them in a somewhat respective manner of where they should go. So you can see I have all my parts in the free space and the ones that aren't fixed, they're floating, I can click and hold and move them wherever I want. So the whole point of this assembly is to mate the parts and lock them in the appropriate mechanical positions or locks they should be. So the first mate I'm going to do is a concentric mate, and that's going to be the outside circumference of the head and the upper circumference of the body. So when I mate those two, if I click and try and move the part, it can satisfy that mate, but it's not fully defined yet, so it still moves in a position that satisfies that mate. We're going to add another mate, which is just a coincident mate between the bottom edge of the head and the top surface of the body. And that will fix those two parts. The head is still allowed to rotate. We don't, it typically takes three mates to lock things in 3D space, but we don't have geometry to do that. So we'll just leave it as is. It's fine. Next, we're going to mate the arm to the body and I'll use a concentric mate using the cutaway on the arm, that's a curved surface, and I'll mate that with the cylindrical edge of our body. Accept that. And like before, I'm gonna click and hold and give you an idea of how that mate can be satisfied, but it's not fully defined yet. The next mate I'm gonna do is the distance of the bottom of the arm with respect to the bottom of the body. That's gonna be a distance mate, and I'll select the bottom of the arm and the flat, bottom edge of the R2-D2 body, and I want that distance to be 20 millimeters. If it's not working for you, you might have to check flip direction or the mate alignment. It might have to fix some mate edges for you, and that's fine. But if these aren't matching up, make sure you check and uncheck the direction and the mate alignment to get SOLIDWORKS to comply with what you have in your head. So we have one more mate to satisfy, and that's the inside edge of the arm with this inside lip edge, and that's gonna be a parallel mate. And those three mates will essentially fully define that part and affix it in the right position to the body. Next, we're gonna mate the foot. And I just want to illustrate that mating is sometimes conceptually one of the harder things to get your head around. And if things start to go out of control and you start making mates that in your head make sense, but then start to behave in a weird way or just don't work as planned, like what I'm showing you here, the easiest way is... If you're stepping through mates, sometimes you can undo them, but if you've done too many wrong things, you can always exit out of the mate, click on the part that is the problem, look at the mates in the part, 
and you can either edit these or just write out delete them and start over which sometimes deleting and start over is the best way to reinforce the muscle memory of how to do the right kinds of mates when mating parts so i've just deleted those mates because as an example of what not to do when you're trying to mate something my first mate will be a coincident mate between the top inside cut of the foot and the bottom of the arm and I'll accept that. I'll do another coincident mate between the inside cut on the foot and the outside bottom edge of the arm and I'll accept that. So as I click and hold you can see we've defined it in one axis, but we still have to, a couple more to do. The next is going to lock the distance and that's going to be a mate between this front edge and the inside cut of that arm. And that's gonna be a distance mate of one millimeter. And you might have to check the flip direction depending on the perspective that you're looking at when you're drawing. It should look just about halfway distance on both sides. I'm gonna readjust my view. We have just about half of everything mated and there's a couple ways you can proceed to do the rest. I really recommend that if this wasn't fully clear, insert the arm again, insert the foot again, and mate them the exact same way, but you're essentially gonna do a mirror version of that. And that will give you more practice to mate and that will complete the full assembly. But if you remember some skills that you've learned before, there's a couple ways you can do this. You could one, for example, make a linear pattern of those two parts and increase that quantity to two, and then they populate in the 3D space. You'd have to mate them. A smarter way to do it is to actually mirror them over the right plane, which if you've done all the previous parts correctly or followed to these instructions, the right plane bifurcates right through the body and the head. And if you were to mirror the arm and foot, you'd have them oriented in the right way, but they still require mates. But what I haven't shown you is a really efficient way to do this. And this will save a lot of time, especially when you're making something that's symmetrical over one plane. So what I'm gonna do is copy the parts, but also copy them with mates. So if I right click on that part that has mates, you'll see an option that says copy with mates. I'm just gonna move this sub menu up by clicking on that little area and it'll, it'll make some room. So what's shown is the part that I want to copy, and this is a multi-step menu process. So I'm gonna click the next option to move on to the next step. And it's gonna step-by-step step show you every mate and do you want to repeat them. So I'm gonna repeat the coincident mate and the distance mate, because those are gonna be identical, just flipped on the other side. And the way we flip it is that last parallel mate, I'm just going to select that mirrored side and it should move that part over. Now these last three mates are associated to the foot and I haven't copied the foot, so I'm just gonna ignore them. I don't want them to copy over. So I'll accept that copy mate and then exit out of this copy mate menu. And you can see that part is copied and it's fully defined, it's, it can't move. So those are the right mate selections. I'm gonna repeat this process by right clicking on the foot, copy with mates, give this menu some room, tap, accept over to the, move on to the next step, the coincident mate is the same, but it has to be, I have to select the other arm as well as the second coincident mate, select the other arm. And conceptually, this is where it can be a little hard to wrap your head around. So this distance mate is what needs to change. And it might be hard to convey how to change it or what exactly to change. So right now, I'm just going to accept this copy with mate. Like I've shown you before, if things get a little bit out of hand, you can always select the part that's the problem, look at the feature tree, go to the mates of that part, isolate what mate you're trying to edit or correct. And I'm going to right click on it, edit that feature, and this is a little bit easier to navigate because we've been through this process before. This edge is the problem and the way I set up the mate, I was actually, the perspective was from the front. So I'm just going to select the front edge. I'll accept those mates. I'm done with the mate menu, so I'll close it out. And we'll just 
snap around our basic views to make sure everything is symmetrically aligned and even. And I think it looks pretty good. So remember, there's many ways to mate things, especially when you have planes of symmetry. It's best to know about them and for you to decide what you're comfortable with. This looks good, so make sure you save it. We'll go to File, Save As, and save it with your Android ID, R2D2, Assembly 1.